Thank you so much for joining us tonight. My name is Barry Erickson and I'm Community Engagement Coordinator here at Wheaton Public Library. <clears throat> tonight, we are delighted to bring you another art demonstration in partnership with the DuPage Art League. Right now, let me go ahead and turn it over uh, to Sandy Winter with the DuPage Art League. Thank you, Barry. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I, I am Sandy Winter. I am Vice President of Activities at the DuPage <clears throat> Art League. The DuPage Art League is dedicated to promoting and encouraging the visual arts through classes, workshops, gallery exhibits, public programs such as this one. And we are grateful to uh, the Art League as well as the library for this night's demonstration by acclaimed artist Fatima Figueredo. Fatima has been dedicated to painting watercolors for more than 20 years. She attended the Fine Arts School in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, her native country. And after her second year, she decided to switch focus and graduated in industrial design. Her interest in fine arts flourished when she moved to the United States and watercolor was her first choice as medium. Landscape and florals are her preferred subjects. Fatima is a signature member of the Illinois Watercolor Society, a member of the Wayne Art League, and has her paintings in private and public places here and abroad. She teaches watercolor painting at the Fine Line Creative Arts Center in St. Charles, Illinois. Fatima's watercolors are vibrant, bold, and colorful, a constant reminder to her Brazilian origins. She has received several awards in her work and shows and exhibits. Hi, good evening. Thank you for you coming here today. Thank you for everybody that's watching me through a screen online. Um, I want to thank you to the Wheaton Public Library for this opportunity and the DuPage Art League for this opportunity too. It's an honor to be here doing a demo today. Um, like uh, Sandy said, I am painting watercolor for more than 20 years since I moved to US. And I always wanted to paint watercolor when I was living, studying in Brazil, but I didn't have the opportunity until I moved to here. And I could um, find wonderful instructors and great schools that I could go and learn a lot. It's still a process. It's not, I don't think never, you never end the learning process. I feel like every day I have to still struggle with my paintings. Uh, not everything that I do, I like. Actually, more than almost, more than half what I do, I don't like. <laughs> I am very, um, I am very crit critical with myself. Uh, I try to uh, go in the painting until something gets good, but in the end, if it doesn't turn a good thing, I just throw away. But I try, I don't give up very easily. And, um, uh, and I love the medium. I think what I call it, uh, it's a passion for me. It's a medium that I felt that I could express myself because it's so fluid and it, it, it's spontaneous. I, I am a very spontaneous painter. I follow the rules, rules, but I feel myself going away from the rules very often. Sometimes gets well, something is good, some, sometimes it's not, but I try. That's the way I am. So you have to be sincere with yourself when you are painting. So I feel like uh, my way to paint, it's very particular mind. And um, the way I, I choose the colors, it's something very personal. Uh, most of times uh, the colors don't uh, express what I'm seeing. And I, I prefer this way to put something different from the reality that I, makes me feel better 
trying to find something different what, what they see in the real life. Um, so I will move to back to my table now and talk about the, this demonstration today because two hours is too, is too little to, to do a paint. I will try to, to go um, a further I, I can, but you'll see. Well, I decided to do a, a landscape today. Like, uh, I don't know if I said, I, uh, I love watercolor because I love the, uh, I love flowers and flowers are watercolor and flowers, I think they match very well, but I love landscapers, landscapers too. So I, did that. I decided to do a landscape. I think everybody seen to the screen, don't need to show. So this is a photo I took, I don't know, couple years ago, and I completely forgot where it was, but I think some, some place around here. And, um, and it's in black and white because I think black and white helps me to, to see value and I don't see the real colors because I don't want to be slave of the color that I see in the photo. And if I, took black, I, 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 I print in the black and white, I don't need, I can make with the colors from my mind from what I, I am feeling that moment. So now today I'm doing a, a, a fall landscape. So I can just put fall colors in this black and white photo. I made a sketch because I like to do a sketch. This sketch helps me too. It's like um, a warm up of a painting. I, I am enjoying very much to do, I'm enjoying very much lately to do a lot of sketches, even if I don't, they don't translate to a painting, but they, they help me to, to see values and to, to work with composition. So I love to do sketches like that. I have a couple of books. If you want to see later, I can show you some books that are my sketchbooks. So I have my reference photo, I have my sketch, and I have my colors. So decide of a palette of colors, it, like I said before, is very personal. And for this landscape, I decided for this color that's called Pirelene Maroon. I don't know if I'm saying the right, because it's a hard word for me, Pirelene Maroon. This is a Lizarine Green Song. This is called Quinacridone Siena Opera, uh, Cadme Yellow, uh, Aurelin, that's a uh, um, lighter yellow and more cold yellow. Cobalt Teal, that's a color that I enjoy working because when I work with uh, more oranges, I think Cobalt Teal gives a little bit like, um, um, something in the orange that catch the eye. Cobalt blue and cerulean blue. So those are going my, to be my colors. I already put my colors in my palette here. So I put always fresh color in my palette. And um, I will talk about this process, how I will do so you have, I you, I you have some trees here on the right side that are going to be light against the dark of the background of the, of the foliage. So how are you do these trees that are going to be light? I use tape. Uh, I like to work, uh, is, I, I enjoy to, to work with tape and I will show you how I I have read, I already have my paint with tape here, so I will not you not not need to wait for me to put tape in everything. But I want just to show you how I make a tree with tape. So I use this um, blue tape that's um, painter's tape, and. I have to hold the tape here, otherwise I can't, I'm not able to, to tear the tape. So the tape is, is, um, is a hard line here and straight line, I don't want a straight line. So what I do, I tear the tape 
And this is a process that it's so enjoyable for me because I, when I'm doing that, I am still thinking what I'm going, which colors I'm putting in my paint. So it's a time that I have to think about my paint when I am doing these trees. So I start to, like say, you have a, so what happened, this side of the table that's tiered, it's irregular. So that's a side of a, of, of a tree. And then I keep it going. So I, I play with these tapes for some time before I, paint, I start to paint. It's so much fun for me because I feel like I am like, it's like a child playing with something. So I don't know, it's fun. It's very entertaining. So I can use, I can bend my hand one side and another side so I can um, measure the thickness of the tape. So I keep it going like that. So I can have, so I block the, 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 white, the white trees. And, and then I do some branch too. And then I can use a frisket to do the small ones. I apply frisket that's the, uh, this, um, I use this called Pebeo, but you can use anyone. It's, I like it because it's blue, I can see. I use a stick. I don't use a, a brush, I use a stick. It's, then I can, I can do a lot of marks with this, then I shake some, so you can you can have fun with this thing. Anyway, this is the how I do my um, my trees. So now I will turn my my the paint I am going to do the on the side, and I already have my trees here. So I made this at home, of course. Otherwise, I spend like almost one hour doing this. And it's so much fun to do that. I love to do trees like that. Um, just to give an example, this, this a painting, the trees, I block the trees with tape. So then I, you can paint free and then take, when you take the tapes out, you have the white trees and then you the trun trunk, then you can just uh, paint them. And I will give you another example to something like that. So I block the trees and this is the same process. Okay, now I have a draw my, <clears throat> I have a tree in this side and I have some paint. So I, I hope you can see my pencil marks here of my composition, but I don't draw too much with the pencil because I don't want to see pencil marks after I, I, I finish my paint, not many. I don't mind some, it's okay. It shows that you had a drawing there, but sometimes some are, some, in some places it's not appropriate. So let's start. Um, I want to talk a little bit about um, my brushes. I use <clears throat> mainly three kinds of three kinds of brushes. This one is a flat brush. It's a Kolinsky brush and holds a lot of water. I love this brush. Has a long, long hair. This one is a Kolinsky brush also. It's a rounded brush. And this one I am going to paint today. It's a Chinese calligraphy brush that I enjoy very much painting with the brush. This is a animal hair also. I don't know what kind of animal. If you ask me, I don't know. Could be camel, goat, anything, but it's an animal. And, um, and I enjoy this brush. So let's start. And I use those riggers for little, for little, little branches, something. It's going to be dark and I have a light tree over here. 
And then I will start with, so I, will, I have some sky here. So I will start to put some color in the sky that will be uh, cerulean blue. So I just wet some water here where my sky is going to be. So the paper is not completely dry. I will add a little bit of uh, cobalt blue over here. More. Okay, I will bring this blue there is a path here, like a, it's not a road, it's a path, I would say. It's more like, so I will bring this blue down. This path. So I have some color here. And I will add a little bit of alizarin crimson on my blue, so it will become more, I will change the color here in the some blue, so it will be some purple here. Okay, so I have my blue, my sky, what some more over here. Excuse me, Fatima, there's a question. Can you just clarify? Uh, someone's asking about the color that you used on the trees, but that's actually tape, is that correct? It's tape, it's blue tape, it's a painter's tape. Yes, it's a... Um, uh, just normal painter's tape, yeah. That's not color. Looks like color, but it's color, but it's not paint. <laughs> Great, thank you. Welcome. Okay, now <clears throat> this tree over here. Okay, I will start with. Um, some the light yellow that's called aureolin. But before, I wanted to just spray some water so it doesn't get some water in the paper. So you have some light yellow on this part. And now are you going to change for my cadmium yellow? Usually, I don't use cadmium very much. Actually, I am using less and less, but cadmium has a brilliance that's so hard to, a vibrance that's so hard to, to find in another colors. And Fatima, it's not necessarily clear to our virtual audience. Um, are you working flat or on an easel? Oh, I just had something behind. I took because I don't want the colors to, to run too much. 
So I just took that out. But otherwise, you know, it's not a easy. But otherwise, your paper is fairly flat on the table. Is that oh, correct? Oh, yeah. Now it's flat. Correct. <laughs> but at home, I have a something. Um, because my table is higher, I have some uh, 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 easel. But here, I am trying to, to work more. Okay, I need more yellow. And now <clears throat> I will introduce another color, it's called Crinac Donciano. So this big tree here, <clears throat> I, will show, I, I don't think you are able to see. But there's a big tree here. That's the light part of the tree. Going here. Now, in this corner, I will change a bit of the color just to put some blue over there. Some. Just a reminder to our in-person audience, if you have any questions, just raise your hand and I'd be happy to come over to you with the mic so everyone can hear your question. Oh, yeah. You know, watercolor um, dries a lighter than... Uh, Are you painting? Lighter after, uh, it is lighter after dry. So I am not afraid to keep adding more. Colors. Are you painting on uh, cold press paper or is it hot press? Cold press, okay. 140. Um, Pounds. So I try to move to make the colors move. I need more, a little bit more color over there. So I introduce now, this is opera. Opera has a, a, another color that's a very good vibes too. Just some water, so there's a, my paper still gets um, Now I will move to this area here. It'll be a little bit uh, greenish. So 
so I want to make some green. I have cobalt blue and I have my yellow, so I don't need to introduce another color. I can just mix on green over here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I know it's. So now I have a, some three in the back, the backs are here. Adam, if you don't mind me asking a couple more questions from our virtual audience while you're sure. working there. Uh, is the picture that you're working from, is that color or black and white? Black and white. And did you mention yet what brand of paints you're oh, using? Uh, yeah, good question. I, no, I didn't. I can do now. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I have here okay the Alisa Ringer zone Windsor Newton Opera Rose Windsor Newton Crina Cardone Sienna Daniel Smith and Prilene Maroon Daniel Smith Cadmium Yellow Windsor Newton Aurelium Aurelium Windsor Newton Cobalt Blue Windsor Newton Cerulean Blue Windsor Newton and I have a color that I'm going to use too, that's called Cobalt Teal, that's from Graham. So most of my paints are Winston Newton and Daniel Smith. Graham, 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 thank you. <laughs> and are those the paints you would recommend for a beginner or something else? Oh. Uh, I, you know, colors are very personal. The only thing I recommend for beginners is, beginners is start with professional paints. Because sometimes I see my students starting with, oh, this is a student paint. It's okay, I'm just starting. I said, okay, don't blame, don't blame you if something gets wrong, blame the paint. Start with a good paper, a good paint. Don't, 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 because you get frustrated very soon if you don't have a good material. But colors are very personal. So I have a lot of colors in my studio, but of course, every, everyone has their favorites. I have my favorites. But yeah, I recommend those. Those are good paints, uh, professional paints. So always buy. Brushes are expensive. Probably brush, I'll say, okay, wait a little bit to buy a good brush because they're very expensive. But paints and paper, it's very, it's very important to start with good ones. And while we're talking about supplies, um, can you say one more time the type of paper that you're using? Oh, thank you for asking. It's called Arches. What I call Arches paper, uh, 140 pounds, cold press. Can you say again what you used to um, go over the tape? I think you said you applied it with the stick. Oh, the um, masking fluid. Masking fluid or frisket. I don't know some people call frisket. It's masking fluid. So um, I use this, you can see over here, some for like little twigs, you can use a lot of the people use masking fluid for the paintings for everything. But uh, here I just use for some branches, some tweaks, something small that I can't use. I can't use the tape. I use the tape as much as I can. But when it comes to little parts, uh, the masking fluid, it's, um, it's easier to, to achieve little things with the masking fluid.
Okay, I'm trying to finish this part here. Then I can go to the other side. So I try to do some shapes here. That I can carve some shapes on this big tree here. I'm, I'm interested in knowing what are you seeing when you're painting that left, the yellow and orange and green? What, what is your, what's going on in your head? Are you seeing trees? Or are you just seeing shapes? When they painted this part? Yeah. Who's this? Ah, hi. <laughs> um, I see that part is a part that the tree that uh, it's more going down. Okay. This part here. And this light part is more the light yellow here. So here is going to be this part. So this is the first layer. Uh, after this dry, you, see what you, keep, you add something there, it's more colors. But you mean what I see in terms of shape, you mean, or in terms of color? Shape. Shape. Okay, this is the part of the tree that's rounding down. So I you make um, uh, the trunks is the trunks coming through this, but like the, the, the part of the tree that's ag against the light, the lights coming from this side, from the right side. Did they, did they respond to you correct? Okay. <laughs> so that's what I see. <clears throat> So now it's time to, if I want to soft some edges here, I can soft some edges. Let's see if I need a little bit more. Okay. Now, the paints, I try to spray some water to give some texture. Now, I will paint this side here. This part here, that's the, 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 like the path going in that direction, or I can paint this side, whatever. Uh, probably I will do this side first. So this side is going to be dark. So I am going with more dark colors over there. So. More alizarin green song. And yellow. I I tend to mix more my colors in the paper than in the palette. Because I think I like when they mix in the palette. I, I, I think it's more fun for me to mix colors in the paper. So that's the trees. So to do the mixing colors on paper, you have pretty much keep the paper wet. Yes. So that you don't get hard edges. Uh, I 
I try to, to spray a little bit before so I don't get hard edges. If I get some hard edges, I will just um, uh, soft later, but it's better not to, to have less work later. So if I can do the soft edges now, if possible, I, I prefer. That's the three that closed and not work. Going to be very dark in the in the upper part. The thing working with this tape, it's good because you can play with your colors and you don't need to worry about painting around. And uh, and uh, you can I can you can be more spontaneous too. Fatima, someone's asking what colors are you using to mix the blue gray? the blue gray, cobalt blue. Uh, this one is cobalt blue with a little bit of the colors I have in my palette. So it's, a, it's a hard to say exactly which color I'm using now because the colors are mixed here, but it's kind of all this color that are in my palette here now. Yeah, it becomes like a bluish gray because I have blue, I have yellow, and I have red. So they kind of mix together. So I'm going to keep coming. So this, I am coming here later, but I have two. Wait for them coming to this area here. So <clears throat> I wait a little bit here to finish this. Sometimes when I'm painting, I'm very messy. <laughs> I have a huge um, garbage by my side because I, a lot of paper. So wait a little bit to dry. Let's see this and put this over here. 
While it's drying, maybe I'll try and get a close up of your palette and okay. of the painting. This is Ken, and also just throwing some Ken over there. Okay, <clears throat> now I'll come to this area here. That is the, the side of the road or the path or something. Okay, I will try to make some gray colors to here to make on this part. Do you not tape your paper down usually, or do you pre-wet everything before you start painting so it's not bubbling up on you? Your it, paper oh, it, that it, you're painting on, yours it, isn't like bubbling up a lot. Do you normally tape it down or do you no, pre-size it? No, I usually leave like loose like that. I don't tape and um, if I am working the easel, uh, I have to clip. But I, I try not to tape it because when I tape, I feel like buckles more because the paper is expanding and with the water. So if you tape, it's, it starts to buckle. So I like to leave it like this, very loose. It, it's been good for me. <laughs> the paper is not, I can't, I can't complain. It's not a... With the drying time, someone is uh, commenting with acrylics, they sometimes use a hair dryer to help uh, dry the paint. Would this be a bad practice with watercolors? Do you ever oh, use yeah. a hair dryer? Oh, yes, I, use, I do. Mm -hmm. But when I'm painting my studio, what happens? I, I go to, I go, um, um, up and have a coffee and do something and then I'll come back, the paper is, is almost dry. So I don't, I don't need to, almost don't need to use a hair dryer unless I am on hurry because I don't like the, the sound. So I introduce another color here <clears throat> that I am going to introduce here later too. It's called uh, the Pirelline Maroon. It's a kind of maroon. And um, warm, very more warm. Fatima, there have been a couple comments about how ingenious it is to be using that blue painter's tape uh, to create the negative space of, of the trees. Uh, do, you have, do you just tear the tape or, or how, how do you... Uh, create those shapes with the tape. I know you showed us before, but maybe if you can talk just a little bit more yes. about, about that. Uh, what I do, um, I'll take this for a minute from here. What I do, it's I have, I put the tape in the place that's, and I go very slowly, turn the tape like this. So it's a very, it's like almost like a meditation. <laughs> it's so simple. <laughs> Don't need to think much because in watercolor, I have to, the brain has all time being, you have to be all time alert. And here it's very simple. I will tape a table, but I will take out. 
before I leave. <laughs> so I keep. Um, so if I wanted to make a, like a big a, a, a big tree, and sometimes some, I, I go like, see, it's, I have a tree here already. So and see the edges are all. Um, so there's not not mystery here. Just play with the tape, and then keep going new, building the tree. That's that's it. If I go like a small a small branch, so I take a little thing, and sometimes oh I want to do a branch here. So it's very it's very entertaining. I think. <laughs> At the same time, I am enjoying because I'm building a tree and I can do another one coming this direction or like this direction. When you paint, if, if you paint, you can't change much after you paint. But if you do this beforehand, you can change your trees, whatever you want. Oh, I decide, oh, this one is not a good position. I change for another position. Yes. And for those very fine details, do you tend to use tiny pieces of tape or the masking fluid more? Oh, I use as much as possible the tape. I go like very tiny pieces like, you know, there's a limit that you can use the tape. You can't go too much. So, and um, when it comes from here, then I use the masking to finish a branch. So Great. it's, um, thank you. Welcome. I can't take the tape before today. <laughs> How do you prevent uh, the, the water from bleeding underneath? Because when I paint rooms and I use that type of paint, yes, it often bleeds under the tape. No, doesn't bleed. No, doesn't bleed. If it bleeds, is is it's okay because the, the trees have some um, texture. No? It's okay. I before I used to do uh, one tape that's called frog tape that has more. Um, adhesive, yeah. But now I am using the blue one. That's it's fine. Works well too. Um, the the paint doesn't bleed uh, under the tape, and if it bleeds, it's it's not bad. It bleeds a little bit. It's okay. Okay, let's go here. I wanted to see if I can go as much as possible today with this painting. And so some soft edges here. So this is the part <clears throat> over here. Sometimes you think, oh, why did you put that color there? I don't know. <laughs> I just like, <laughs> I don't know, sometimes I feel like, I, oh, I want to put some color there. It's very, like I said, painting for me, it's very uh, intuitive. I don't know, it's kind of, I know some basic things, but in the end I, I do whatever, I, you know, we are the owner of your art, so you can do whatever you want. We always have lots of questions about the materials. Uh, someone is asking again about the weight of the cold press paper. 140. 140. Yes, 140. 140. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and someone else is asking, do you use Asian brushes? And I do. If, and if so, uh, where do you get them? Uh, <laughs> that's, that's a good question. My son brought to me when he went to China once, and then I asked him, bring him some brushes. And he went to a market there. He said, Mom, that was a crazy market. And I have a couple of those. They are so nice. This, I have another one here that's beautiful too. So I paint with them. Sometimes they come a hair, so I have to just take, but I don't know what kind of brush this animal is. It. Hope it's, it's not, it's a good, good way to make a brush, not crazy but yeah and he brought those brush but i think you are able to find here in some place probably they sell calligraphy brushes um i don't think it's hard to find but i paint with them because i have them but you have so many good brushes everywhere all oh. 
make some one gray here. This one is dark gold. So if I put some green over there too. Because it has some vegetation here. So. Now I am mixing colors here in the palette, trying to make uh, some, some grays. I have um, a spatula that I like to do some little bit so, some marks here, but it's still early. It depends if the silver is wet, so I have to wait a little bit. In meanwhile, I am going to this side. Let's see. Clean my palette that's I don't have more space here. I feel like more space, more, more messy. If I have a small palette, I don't do much mess. So now I will go for this light yellow that I want to put over here. You might like the grass here. Maybe a little bit of this. That's the corner. Okay, now I have my underpaint here. Uh, 
uh, would like to have a break so we can talk about and why this is trying. Sure, uh, let's go ahead and uh, screen share your slideshow. Is okay. that what you wanted? Yes. Okay. Okay, and just uh, say next slide when you're ready for me to move on. Okay. Um, like I said, I love to paint flowers. And this is a still life. Um, I painted a couple, many years, no, like six years ago, I guess. It's five or six years ago. And, and it's um, the same thing. It's transparent watercolor with the, um, um, the uh, ash paper. It's 140 pounds. And um, and I sold this painting too. It's not with me anymore. I love, I like it very much, but it's um, it's also life. Okay. Oh, by the way, um, I put a uh, side by side the the sketch and the um, and and the paint because I I think it's very important to sketch. Uh, I know. Not everybody likes to sketch, to draw, but for me, it's very important to sketch, to draw, gives me the, the, the uh, like a, um, a beginning or a warm up of like, of, um, you know, something that I can start. Because if I look just um, on the photo or in the, um, or in plein air, I need something that I, I did before I start to paint. It's, for me, it works very well and it's very important. Okay, next. Oh, this is um, a painting, an, a landscape I made from a photo I took um, in Giverny. And I, I liked very much the, the colors there. So when they came back home, I decided to do uh, the paint. It's, uh, it's, um, it's an art tool, 140 pounds. So I love the idea of doing a detailed sketch ahead of time. That would fits with how I would like to paint. Uh, where do you get the colors from? You just, you just remember the picture? You make them uh, up as you go along? Or you know the like leaves said, are green, so you paint them green? Or? Well, like I said, the colors are, most of them are from my mind. Um, and some I, I, I saw in the photo, but some I just brought from my mind. I made up. I like to make up colors. And, and I feel like the paint belongs to me. It's not from the photo that I'm trying to portray. So, yeah. Next. Uh, this was a paint I made a sketch uh, in um, on the place there. This was in Hawaii, and I made a sketch. And then I, when I came back home, I painted that. So it was um, you know I, I love plein air, but we we can't have plein air always. I think plein air for me is the most. Um, um, how can I say, plain way, uh, great way to paint. It gives me so much more pleasure to paint in plein air than in the studio uh, because I can see the colors. In the photo, you don't see colors exactly how they are. That's why I have to make up some color. But when you are there outside, seeing the colors, seeing the light, seeing things that are around, the birds, everything that's around there, it's much more it's much more pleasant for me. And I love to do that, but not always we can go outside. So then I take photos and I, I do sketches there. I love to do sketches. And then when I come back home and the things are still fresh in my mind, they kept fresh for some time, like one week, I'll say. I still remember the things very well in one week. After that, they start to fade, but Sometimes I come home and I see a, a sunset and I come home, I can see it perfectly, the, the things are still in my brain. 
so I can start to paint and, and put the colors in the paper. And so that's what happened this painting. When I came home, I, I painted it right away because the things are still fresh in my mind. Okay, next. This is a different paint. This is a small paint and is made on Yupo paper. Yupo paper is a plastic, like a plastic, you paint on plastic. It's very, um, it's fun, but it's not too much ease because the colors don't penetrate in the paper. It stays in the surface. It's easy to lift because you can lift, almost wash everything away, but you can make some nice effects uh and um but at the same time it is hard to build up layers in yupo paper but it's fun um i don't paint on yupo very often but once a while it's nice to have fun and do a different um a different um paper or so next this is another different paint these i made a couple years ago it's it's um canvas like I said, they don't paint. My, I paint most of my things in paper, but sometimes I, I like to try. And this was a watercolor on canvas. This was the same thing. I saw that tree uh, and I came home and I painted right away because the, 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 that tree and that field, it was beginning of fall. It was starting to become more like yellow, gold yellow. And of course, I put more, much more color than it was in there. But, um, but I want to paint right there. But it's on canvas. It's fun to paint on canvas. This is watercolor and ink, I think, acrylic ink. So I, mix, I made some mixed media on this painting. This was another painting from Hawaii. And then I was very... Um, Inspira my inspiration is inspired by the waterfalls and the, the water and the freshness and the vibrance of the landscape that I came back home and decided to do another paint. Okay, okay flowers. Those are my, I love flowers to paint flowers. I can't, and that is, um, those are pops I love. Those are my favorite. So this paint I made a plain air uh, on the Chicago Botanical Garden in the early, um, um, late, late, late spring, they start to have the pop, so I, I paint there. Yes. So we have uh, I'm sorry, can, let's wait just a minute and get it in the uh, microphone. Were there pieces of that that you masked out first, like the buds in the front? Did you mask those with Prisket or tape, do you remember? No, I didn't mask anything here. I painted around. Yeah. Yes, I painted the red around the bud. And um, no, I didn't. In the plain air, it's, you have to be more quick and it's spontaneous. Fred, um, masking is for more studio paint. You have more time to, to plan. But plain air have to be, and the, uh, in the plein air, I paint in the easel so you can see things coming, paint like coming down because it was in the easel. So it was more like a vertical painting. And so it was fun. I love plein air. It's very, it's, it's more spontaneous. <laughs> Autumn, if we can just back up uh, to the canvas just for a second. Sure. Uh, I mean, the person is asking uh, for the watercolor on canvas like this one, did you prime with watercolor ground or just paint directly to a standard canvas? I paint direct to the canvas. This is a watercolor canvas. Um, so I just paint direct to the canvas and after finish, uh, I spray um a varnish to protect because canvas i don't put glass so i have a um i just give a little sp uh, spray with um a varnish to protect the canvas so people can touch and doesn't have anything yeah okay thank you we'll, we'll go we'll go back ahead then this will try <laughs> 
this one. Yeah. Uh, this painting I made from a photo, and it was very interesting because the first one I did, uh, you know, when there's a label to the photo, and you feel like, hmm, I hate it. But I put a lot of time in that paint, and I said, and I like the composition from this photo, and I decided to do another paint, and I decided to do something completely different, to put my colors, don't look to the photo anymore, and came a paint that I like. So that's what I said. I never look to a um, original photo, the colors in the photo. I try to get away from the colors in the photo and make a black and white photo, do a sketch and look to the sketch, not the photo. Because it, it, the tendency is to be, is, you'll be slave to the colors in the photo. And you would, then you are just replicating what's there. So I try to, to, <laughs> to put aside and just look to my sketch and look to the black and white photo. This was a paint I, I made from a photo in the fall too. This paint, it was interesting because I was throwing, I was, always, I was throwing this in the garbage. And then after some time, I, I, I wait one month and then after some time I look at it, oh, perhaps I can have some, some help, salvation here. So <laughs> then I look at it again, and I took one sponge that's called Magic, Mr. Magic or something like that. I, Magic Rays, I never had used that before. I hear about people saying that is a good, but I thought, oh, that thing doesn't work. And it worked very well. And I took the colors that I didn't like, and I put another colors there. So. Sometimes you can't save a paint. I try to save most of my paints, but this was one that was almost going to the to the pile that was the refuse. <laughs> okay, this was a paint I did um, uh, during the 2020 because I was teaching then during the pandemic. I had to. To, I start to teach online. So the, I did this paint on, um, for my students online. Uh, and the square format, that's a, a format that I usually don't paint, but it's fun to paint it because the composition sometimes is hard in the square. Uh, so that a, is a paint I did for, for them. Okay, finish. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's go back to our, to our demo here. So we have a couple of colors now. Let's see if we can go to more a layer. It's a little bit wet, but I think we, we can go because I want to see if you can go until we, um, I can take the tape. So we still have some time. Clean a little bit here, my palette now. It's very good. So I want to define it this side now and give more color over there. And <clears throat> this part here needs to be darker. I have some trees going here and I have a big tree here. And so, Let's put that tree over there. But before, I want just to have a little bit more color there. This.
I want this part here to be darker. Okay, I will let that dry. And come to this part here, that's the, the green. And I want to make that here darker than that, more blue. Autumn, if someone's yes. asking about your palette, uh, what kind of palette is it that you're using? This one mm -hmm. or this? Uh, um, how about both? Okay, this is a tray. It's called butcher tray. It's metal. I like it because it's a big size. And this, I have two palettes. This is my, um, I would say, travel palette. Um, it's a... I don't know if I'll be able to buy these anymore. I tried to find as I can't find. Uh, someone gave it to me sometime, many years ago, actually. And it's broken, uh, the lid is broken, but I love it because I can put my colors and, and it's a very um, nice format to put in my bag. It's plastic. Um, then I can put my colors. I have, I can have so many colors here. And it's very handy to bring it to, to give a, have a class or to, um, to do a demo. And then I have the tray that is easy to, to put in my bag too. In my house, I have a um, um, more traditional um, porcelain palette that's very heavy. So I like it because it's very nice and sturdy and has two parts that I can mix colors. So that's how I, um, I have my palette. So I like both. And then in the end, I end up using both <laughs> because it's, I have both side by side in my, in my studio. So it's... Um... And there's another uh, technique question. Someone asks, do you ever do paintings from the beginning to end wet into wet or are most of your paintings wet on wet, then finish wet on dry paper? Uh, I like to keep painting. I don't like to, to let the paint dry completely to come with another layer. I like to keep painting and take advantage of the moisture of the paper 
And it's more challenging because if, if most people that paint watercolor knows, if you go in the damp surface, you can get some surprise. Sometimes are good, sometimes are not. Sometimes I like them, the surprise. They are interesting. Uh, but I love to keep painting and take advantage of the moisture of the paper. If you want to be safe, you have to, lay, to wait one layer to dry like here, probably you wait for this to dry in a safe way. But if you keep paint, it's more challenging, but it's more fun because the colors are still um, start to mix with the colors that are here and they are not completely dry. And you can have some fun effects. So depends of the uh, subject. Sometimes it's more, it's more uh, interesting to play safe and wait for dry, but I like experimenting and experimenting for me, it, it's, it's, I am not, um, I like to try different things. So I like to keep painting and see what's going to happen. Did they, did they respond to you correct? <laughs> That's why I hope that, okay, now <clears throat> this side, it's very dark, but I am going to have one, two, three, but I want to go have another tree in between. So what I do, I am to carve a tree here. you be another one, you'll be another one there. So now I you, let's say in my other layer, I am going to have another tree over here. I love to do this. This is called uh, negative painting. And uh, it's so much, and it's another thing that's really fun for me is to do negative painting. It's like to carve shapes more and more depth in the depth to find something, something new. Like here, I, I am trying to find another, another tree over here. just to paint another layer. See, you can see there's another tree coming there in the depth. And then I will drop um, some, this is cobalt too. Some cobalt too, because I like the, the two together, cobalt too and the, the orange. Here, I can have another tree coming this direction. So I will go. That's one thing that I have to be more. Um, see, I have another one here and I can have a branch here and go that direction. change it for my blue. So I need this side needs to be dark so the trees can have a contrast between the dark.
So it needs to be a little bit darker here. Like I said, the waterfall applies. Lighter, so if you think you are putting a lot of colors, you are not. Now I will let this dry because otherwise I'll not have time for take this tape now. <laughs> Let's see if we can. The tape, it, uh, sometimes we can even uh, take when it's damp. The frisket, that's hard to take because the frisket needs, the paper needs to be completely dry otherwise you will smush the paint. But the tape sometimes is a little bit damp and they still can take the tape off. Uh, um, we still have a half hour. So if um, I don't fi finish this today, I have another one to show you. So you can see it because um, I made this paint before just to, to, to see what was going to happen. So I have another one so you can see. But now I want to uh, finish this part here, wait this to dry a little bit because I want to have a, a tree going on here and some trees here. So <clears throat> that's why I like to paint. I like to paint, see the papers is still damp. And I still keep paint. I don't mind to paint like that uh, because I want to take advantage, like I said, of the, of the wetness of the paper. But like you know, watercolor, it's water and pigment on paper. So the, the process of drying is the pigment starts to um, settle on the paper and the water starts to evaporate. So if you want, if you come with more water in your brush and go to that spot, what happened? The water is going to push the pigment away and they are going to have those blossoms that some people don't like. And sometimes uh, they are nice, sometimes they are not in the right place. So what I do, I try to bring less water. It's hard because these brushes carry a lot of water, but I try to, to bring more just pigment than water as I keep going to, to so I can control the, the amount of pigment I have in my brush. Um, I have um, this um, sponge where I dry my brush, brush all time so I can, I can know how much water and I have in this brush. They hold a lot, but like I said, here is start, starting to dry. If I come with water here, will give me a blossom. So I have to be very careful. I can come with a, with a tree over here, but I need to be very careful now. So I wanted to wait a little bit more to dry this part. I hope I can that do today to show you, but if not, I have something, uh, one that I finish, I can show you. But I, now, <clears throat> Let's see what I have here. We have some darks going on here. 
with some some more green. So let's see if we can do that now. Uh, cadmium yellow is a very opaque um, yellow. So you have to, I want I have to be very careful because otherwise I am going to be too much opaque. Uh, so I have to. See, I have a more pigment now in my in my brush. I hope I don't get any any blossoms over there. So here. So I am being more careful now. That's a part that my Some edges. This part here is almost dry, so I, I will be safe to go there. So my sky has. One thing that I forgot, <laughs> because I start to talk and I forgot. I remember I was going to make some grasses, I completely forgot. Now it's gone. <laughs> I can try <clears throat> dark here and see if I can make it there. So I can open some grasses over there. Okay, now <clears throat> let me show you the the photo again. Uh, there is some cast shadows across the road. Okay, let me go change this water. Another bucket. Um, let's make some mixing here. So <clears throat> these shadows are coming in this direction. And at the same time, I will show you uh, some of the grass.
So now, don't ask me which color is that. It's a mix of colors. <laughs> Purple. Yeah, there's another picture. See, oh, yeah. With some really blue, I want more gray here. And these shadows go. I have my shadows here and here. Now <clears throat> I will try to finish this corner. <clears throat> because it has some grasses, but most of the, this part here is. Okay. In here outside. So see, I like to leave my, my paper like free. So it buckles a little bit, but doesn't bother me. Then we're looking for something in the corner. Blue here. Okay, let's see if I can do this three now. Now I want to do um darky, but so I'm mixing all the colors I have in my palette. Let's see, I can. Brown, some blue, some yellow. Mm. 
So this three is an. In between the foliage. So here you come. Fatima's working. Did anyone have any other questions? One more question about the sketch. Uh, I was looking on the website of what I think what the studio where you teach. You use just three uh, three B and six B pencils. Oh, good question. I use a lot of different things. <laughs> I use um. I have um, my sketch. Uh, I use, I start with 6B, then I move to this um, woodless pencil that is 6B. Then I use a charcoal pencil, 6B. So I use these three. I start with, and then um, sometimes I use these blocks too. That's very good for sketch, this big one. It's um, 9B. And I have these little ones that I like very much too. They are kind of square, but they are so old now. It's 6B. So I use, I start with 6B paint. So I have my 6B pencil somewhere. And then I use all these things for my sketch. Um, uh, let's see. I Is should... that to give the sketch a lot of contrast? Yes, yes. Um, I have some sketch. While this is drawing, I wanted to show <clears throat> some of my sketch. So let's take this because I need that to dry. I hope it dries before we finish today. <clears throat> so, I have ske sketchbooks, but I like to sketch on, on these papers too. So these I do my sketch. Sometimes I, I do little ones to show different um, values, more simplified, but I like to sketch like this. It's a little bit messy because the charcoal gets mess, but I, I love the charcoal. So this is gra graphite and, and charcoal. Um, so another sketch with the, the kind of trees that I am doing here. Um, sometimes I do like, this was a plain air sketch. Another plain air sketch. Another one. So, so this was the same, uh, the same composition, the same, but vertical and horizontal. So I, I try to do both to see which one I like more and I like more the vertical one and with different trees. So I like, I use uh, graphite and, um, 
and I have several sketchbooks, just a little quick uh, on my sketchbooks uh, to show you. So I have several of these um, several, um, different formats, but in this sketchbook, I like to paint. So I can, uh, this is a good sketchbook because holds the watercolor well. So I can paint here, like the colors, the sketch I made in, in black and white, I can paint here with different palette of colors. And I like to write the colors that I make. Sometimes, most of times I write, sometimes I forget, but I like to write because I can remember later which color did I use. So I like this sketch because it's um, a way to, you can do this plein air, that's so easy to do it, so it's much more fun. So those are my, the way I do my sketch. I like to do black and white and graphite and in, in color. Kadama, someone's asking, uh, what type of sketchbooks do you use? It looks like we could see the cover, the cover of the one, but not really. That. I use all kinds, but the one I prefer, I use this one because it's um, what, for watercolor. You can paint watercolor on this sketch. But I like the ones that has the uh, coin, coin spiral. Or, yeah, that you can flip over and easier because some are hard. If you, you, you can have some fence ones, but it's, you know, it's hard to flip the, the page. So it's hard to choose both sides. So I like the ones that were that. And I like this one too, because this is a like, a, you can buy very, is a very simple sketchbook. So, but I have a lot of in my home with this spiral that's easy to, so I'm sorry, just to, to clarify. So in at least one of those sketchbooks, it's actually watercolor paper rather than drawing paper. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if I can keep it going with my tree. <laughs> Put some blue over there. Dark in here. So make more. Now it's time to move to another brush. Um, these two are different, uh, the same kind of rigger, but with different um, number. So let's see if I can, I have some. Actually, I prefer the, the, the little one. This is another thing that's fun too, is to make branches. I don't paint with small brushes almost. Actually, I use just one brush for everything. But um, for branches, you need the small ones. Uh, which one, the, the rigger? So someone is asking the number of the brush that you're using, the uh, larger one. This one, yeah. oh, doesn't ha have a number. If it has, it's Chinese, I can't read. <laughs> <laughs> and actually along the way, since we have a great number of great minds here from the Art Lake here in the room, Someone was asking online if someone knows of a source of those Asian brushes that you could get locally. So just kind of a question out to the crowd. Does anyone know of a source for those? Good question. We Especially the ones search. with the longer handle. Somebody was saying that. 
they are they calligraphy might. brushes. They have this interesting thing that you can hang. I don't have the thing, but I have seen people hang it. Well, it's, it looks like we're all going to have to travel. Yeah. Uh, I can't stand, I got it large and noble, mm. and it's just a kit. Mm. Sometimes brush painting it has those, but other ones that look smaller than that, and they hang on the rack. Oh. Oh, oh, Barnes and Noble. Okay, oh. so it sounds like maybe Barnes and Noble has a, a kit that has some Chinese or Asian okay. brushes in it. Yes. Okay. So a Chinese brush pa painting kit. Thank you. Interesting, thank you. So I am adding, <clears throat> I think you are able to find, I have to research somehow where you can find those brush, but they, they are not too. Nowadays we can find everything. <laughs> okay, so we can go on and on and on with this stream and make more brush here i am going it's still wet and i was in the way here that i can take this i am going to have some trees here but it's very it's still wet so i have to wait a little bit to add those trees over here um okay uh, you start to take the tapes. To take the tapes from the paper, of course, it, the best way is to wait for dry. But now we can't wait. But don't, never take from the side of the paper in this direction, because otherwise you can take a piece of the watercolor paper that has layers. So always take from here to there. Oh, it's so much fun to work with these tapes because you can you can reveal the the, the tree. So nice. I am not able to take the frisket because the frisket is the one that needs to be very dry to take. But the tape, we are able to take the tape from the from the paper and see a tree coming. Be careful because the paint is not dry yet. See how it keeps very nice and clean and doesn't bleed much. No, doesn't have any. <laughs> Some frisk is coming out too. So there's a, some frisk that's coming to us. It's much easier to take when the paper is dry. So if you do this at home, wait the paper to dry. It's still very wet in here. So I have my trees over there. Now I have to decide which color they are going to be. Not brown. It'll be too obvious. You want to put some color there. Okay, now I can't take any more because otherwise it'll start the part there. So <clears throat> 
let's paint the trees. <coughs> Uh, I decided for blue. Here is very wet, so I will leave there. I will not touch this area, otherwise the, the red is going to migrate to the, to my tree. And I can paint whatever one I want to paint. Something yellow. Um, uh, let's see what happened. <coughs> then you can. Paint your tree very peacefully. Okay, what I do usually the trees that are more in the back the main tree i put more color and the two ones that more quadruvants i put more like gray so this one i want to get more attention to this one so i put more color there Some frisco to here, so I leave it now. Uh, here, that is against the sky, that's light, so you go a little bit dark. Um, I have some frisco to here, and it's dry. Let's see if I can paint with this rubber thing. You can, you can use your fingers, but this goes easy. Another branch of here, so <clears throat> then you can make how many uh, branches you, you want. You can make from here, you can make coming from here. So it's a process now that I like to go slow when I am doing branches because it's so easy to spoil and a painting doing little branches or branches because they if they don't look natural it's not doesn't look fine so i like when they go branches like painting the end i go more slow this is why i like the beginning of the painting that is more like spontaneous you have more fun because in the end you have to start little details and i don't like much but i have we have to put some details in the painting but the fun part is the beginning of the painting. So I think it's time to, to conclude. I want to show the one I made very quickly uh, because I think I thought was not going to have time enough to finish this one. And I decided to do another one at home.
and uh, <clears throat> split some. So you can see the final So you can see how it's dark here. And after that layer dry, I still go back and add more darks in negative painting. So, so the trees are, uh, this blue here has against the orange here, gives a nice contrast and the cast shadows and the tree over here. So I, do, I did some trees over here. So that's there. The end of, uh, it's supposed to be the end of that one. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Fatima. Uh, there was a little bit more uh, about the, the brushes. Lots of people were making suggestions about the brushes. Someone uh, was talking about uh, calligraphy brushes on Amazon or eBay, yeah, and right. someone else suggested the Brush Guys, like, which I guess is a supply company that has a lot of uh, brushes. But again, we'll just take another minute. If anyone has any questions, either uh, in the in-person audience or virtually, there are lots of people just commenting about the how ingenious it is to, to be showing both the positive and the negative sense of the trees, how you did that, um, actually painting them and then the, the rivers with the tape. Any other questions from our in-person audience? I'm just looking around here to see, no hands, okay. All right, uh, and I don't think there are any other virtual uh, questions either. So thank you so much Fatima, for doing you. this for us. And thank you again thank to uh, the DuPage Art League for partnering with us on this. I uh, have a great evening, everybody, and we will see you again soon.